And if you notice, elbows are thrown in combinations, just like punches. You can combine punches with elbows. The jab connects me to my opponent. I step and I elbow. Okay, now we do a little accordion, which is a walking, just like a walking shadow boxing exercise. We combine our leg techniques with our defenses. In Muay Thai, traditional uniform, we have a couple of supporters, traditional Thai trunks, Thai anklets, which cut down on the chafing from the shin blocks that we do against the round kicks. They also support the ankles, probably cuts down on varicose veins. Hand wraps to protect the knuckles and the wrists against sprains and pulls. And in Thailand, where the gym tends to be hot, where it's zen, normally it goes bare. In this cooler climate, we wear more clothing until we warm up. Cut it down. Okay, what we're going to use now is focus mitt uh, drill. To illustrate some of the basic boxing combinations and trains. Then we'll show some of the boxing defensiveness against the focus mitt. Then we'll put in some elbow and knee strikes. Okay, I right, set me up for a jab cross. All right, basic jab cross. Just as in Western boxing. Start off slow to get the focus and range. We took single, double, triple, followed by a cross. We work our foot rhythm to vary our range, defensive muscle, flipping. Hands up, okay, now, we simulate now, jab, cross, and hook using the focus mitt. Okay. Jab. Jab, cross, hook. Now we double hook, knee, rear hook, First uppercut will be directed to the chin. Button in the left lead. Notice the pushing motion. Very little arm motion, mainly the body. I want to keep the hand close to the body and get maximum power by putting my torso behind it. So here's lead, rear, lead, rear. Now, double uppercut directed at the ribs. Uppercut is thrown in this range. Very close. Close quarter technique, okay? It's another reason why the arm is not away from the body, because you're too close. You're right here. You have to rely on the body, okay? Shovel uppercut simulates punching here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay? Now, overhand punch, guard position. This punch is to come over the guard and punch my opponent in the jaw. So the way we'll work this, let's go this way. Okay? I'll combine it with the lead uppercut to the chin. So here's the angle simulated chin. Lead uppercut to the chin. Then I would be here and here, okay? So, here are the angles appropriate to those targets. Lead uppercut, overhand. Good, okay. Those are the major basic punches we use, all right? Now, we'll move to basic elbows. Same setup. So far, this is a basic training, stationary, to work distance, focus, and then we'll add in timing elements for the defense. <coughs> Nap elbow happens in this range. I hit him with a jab. I rock his head back, all right? If his head comes forward, I cover. Nap elbow right here, okay? So this is simulates this technique. Now, full horizontal, yeah, off the rear, put the uh, rear elbow in, and follow through. Rear elbow technique, follow through. So, here's my jab with my elbow. So, I might jab here, set him up. Then I can go to a clinch and hold him, and then twist into the horizontal elbow for maximum power. Holding his head, obviously, <laughs> he takes a lot more of the shock wave, okay? Then, a lot of times from here, we would fold to the tie quench and go to the knee attack. Okay. Snap elbow. Push. Horizontal elbow. Push. Yeah. Snap elbow. Yeah. Snap. I don't care. Snap elbow. Horizontal elbow. Snap elbow. Horizontal elbow. So I take a minute. Snap elbow. Horizontal elbow. Snap elbow. Horizontal elbow. Snap. Horizontal elbow. Snap. Horizontal elbow. Snap. See, the snap has less power. It's just the arm. The horizontal, on the other hand, you twist and follow through. Snap, twist, follow through. Snap, twist, follow through. When you hit and follow through, you snap it back and cover, okay? Now, <clears throat> we have the downward elbow technique. A lot of times off of a jab, I would hit him, I would go in and grab the head, his guard would be up. To get around his guard and really hit him hard, I fold the elbow in, so the angle of the trajectory comes over and through his guard, and he gets hit. This is a very powerful technique because the upper back muscles are lapped, are utilized. Tremendous power with this technique. This technique can cause severe brain hemorrhaging. It can certainly obliterate a jaw. Much more, much more dangerous than being hit by a punch in general. Same way with the knees. The knees tend to, there's less energy wasted on the way to the target with these smaller levers. Therefore, more energy is absorbed by the opponent, okay? More energy is absorbed by the opponent, okay? So these are very dangerous, all right. Now, you notice these angles, you follow the punches fairly close. Similar angles, okay. Now we go upper, elbow, downward elbow combination. This would be just like an uppercut and an overhand, but at closer quarters, okay? So, upper elbow, This one folds in. This one folds in. Okay, so here's what we got. Snap, horizontal, okay? Upper, grab, down. The clinching makes the technique even more devastating, okay? Basic knee technique. All right, one of the ways we train this. The rear straight knee, 
Okay? The trainer puts pressure on the chest to teach you proper form. Because for a rear knee technique, you want to lean back, which gives you maximum extension from the hip. It has a lot of power to the technique. Okay? Also, they pulled your head back out of the way. Can't <laughs> counter. You notice the hands are up to intercept any offensive technique he may throw from his hands when you throw your straight knee. A lot of times the way this can work, let's say he gives me a jab. He jabs and I knock the jab down, I come cut his cross, stiff arm in him, right? Lean back and put the knee shot in. Then you would clinch possibly and go to an elbow. So there are changes in range. <laughs> Alright. Touch the chest. Top weight. This will simulate tapping the bladder or the solar plexus. My cue to go is when he pushes. I lean back, there's the technique. Notice when this lead comes forward, this hand comes forward to keep him off of me and keep him off down. So the technique is like this. Okay, so that would be the rear leg straight knee. Okay, we also utilize other angles on the knee technique. Here again, a lot of times it's a counter to a punch. If he were to jab me here, I'd flip the punch. I can enter with the rear hand, and then I would come from the side angle, throw what we call the side knee attack, <coughs> coming at this angle. You notice I'm pulling him into the strike. Okay? <coughs> Now, one of the ways we do this on the pads is, quite often, the man will just hold the pad on the stomach and we go with control. This one is a backup. He will simulate the jab first, then he will fold the pad back in on the stomach. And I'll put the knee shot in. Okay? That's one of the ways we practice the light. We'll show you a couple more drills when we just go freestyle on the heavier tie pads where we can go from punch, elbow, knee to kick with a big enough pad that I can go real hard and the guy can take the attack, okay? So that's the side knee technique. Deflect the punch, side clinch the head, pull the man into the side knee technique, push him off, go back out, okay? All right, we have another one. A hook knee technique, okay? If he throws a punch, it could happen off a kick, but for now, if he throws a punch, maybe I throw a punch and I hit him. I go in to clinch him to knee attack him. He counters me by stepping in real close and counter clinching me. I can't really get a good straight knee. The most I can do is sharp knees to the grind or to the, to the side to try and irritate him and cause Charlie Horse. One of his major ways to counter this is to get up real close to me, okay? Now, when this happens, all right, my major availability for the knee strike is here to the ribs. So we have the swing knee technique. I would raise up outside, swing in and attack the knee. I mean the elbow. Swing and hit. Not as much power as the other two, but more than sufficient to break ribs. Okay? Then, if I manage to hit him and hurt him, take him off down, then out of the clink, I would throw him round kick to the head and come out. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Now we'll show a little bit of the basic boxing defense using the focus mitt. Okay. Uh, set me up for the cross. Okay. What he's going to do this time is I'm in my same basic combination of jab cross hook, which I didn't show earlier, but obviously can also be to the ribs. Okay. All right. So what he's going to do now is he's going to make me work my defense, just like we're fighting. A little bit higher level of training. This time he feeds a jab at my face with the mitt. I tear it. Then I come back to a jab. Cross. And a hook. He feeds at my face. I slip. I might just go to a cross. Get a hook. Or I might slip. Roll to the outside. Push, come in with the body hook. Okay? Now, this time, from this position, he feeds me a jab. He feeds me a cross. Now he sets me up for jab, cross, hook. This time he feeds a jab and across again. Jab and across, okay? All right, jab and across. Jab, jab and across, okay? Right? Now, this time I come back with the rear hook 
in a lead hook. Okay? This time he jabs at me. Alright? And now to jab out. Okay? He throws a reverse hook at me with his mid arm at my head. A reverse hook. I bob and weave it. He sets him up for two high hooks. Okay? He feeds me a jab and across again. This time he hooks off the lead hand at my head. I bob and weave and I come up, hook, 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 hook. Okay? Now this time he feeds me a jab. He pulls it back. I move out. He moves around with me a little bit. Then at will he fires a jab and a cross. Now he sets it for two uppercuts. You get the picture. You add in offense and defense combination. You make the man respond as if he's fighting. Just so he can work his basic defenses. Flipping to the outside with the cover. Flipping to the inside with the cover. You can also add in your duck. Jab with base. A, ju a duck, counter jab low. Okay? So I would duck, counter jab low. He makes me work my jab, my cross, my, my uh, lead high hook, my rear high hook, my lead body hook, my rear body hook, my lead high uppercut, rear high uppercut, shovel uppercut to the ribs low, shovel uppercut to the ribs low, bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving, snap back and catch, here's a snap back and catch, he jab at my face, seeing I can counter punch him, I can get my head out of the way, we'll go slow one, jab at the face, I snap back, catch at the rear hand, I can counter jab him, left his longer arm, in which case then this would tend to happen, jab, foot jab, lead leg foot jab, okay, which we will demonstrate next to basic kicking. Okay, thanks. Okay. I'll hold it. <laughs> All right. I would consider focus mitts and tie, tie boxing pads to be a revolution in training equipment. These pads allow you to do any angles of combination flowing from punches to elbows or punches to knees or kicks to, to kicks to punches, kicks to knees, kicks to elbows. You can put everything together. And the person can also swing the pads at you to make you defend, which makes it just like a real fight, other than the fact that you know you can't get seriously, seriously hurt. But in some ways it goes beyond a real fight because you have to throw more furious flurries. In a real fight you spend a lot more time having to feel out your opponent. So this allows you to really go hard and fast with a lot of power. It's at angles and it's the same distance that you would use in the actual fight because the man will hold the pads close to his body. Also, these have another side effect. The tie pads help temper your body for blows. Because when you're holding the pads, the, the cumulative shock that your body takes is more than it takes in an average fight. Although it doesn't have the effect of, of breaking ribs and contusion, the shock wave itself the cumulative shock wave is greater, all right? So it helps condition your body for shock and helps teach you how to cover your body better. Okay, basic kicking. Basic kicking we use just like our hands, okay? Off the lead, we have what we call a foot jab. Some people call this a front thrust. We lean back. Here again, in order to get the hips behind the kick, we lean back and thrust with the ball of the foot. Okay? The toes come, the toes curl back. We lean, we thrust with the ball of the foot. We're in outside range, so the hands are up in front. This would be in case when I'm here in foot jab range, stand still. He could also take a step and jab at my face, right? So if he does, my hands are out to cut that off, then I would throw my kick. Okay? So hold it to the foot jab. Okay. It has a pushing effect. It actually pushes the man back. Now, targets for this solar plexus, bladder. All right. Sometimes if you're getting fancy in your man, your man's kind of groggy, a little psychological intimidation. Put you out of the face. Can even go here to the throat. A lot of times when a man's about to step and throw a punch, we'll hit him and push him back with it just to knock him off balance. A lot of times in outside range, as the man throws a jab, boom, we knock him back. Okay. Another major target. 
right here, the pelvic area. <laughs> All right. A lot of times what we'll do is, so with the downward trajectory, so see the balance breaking effect? What this tends to do is, as you hit it, folds your man forward. All right, bringing his hand guard down, him forward, and it sets him up to the round kick, to the ribs, or it breaks him down, sets him up for a hard chin round kick to the thigh. Okay, a couple of foot jabs. We have lead and rear. Okay, so there's lead, then we go rear. We go lead, then rear. Lead, lead, rear, rear, rear. Okay, so those are the foot jabs. You can think of it like a jab and a cross, okay? Now, our other major kick would be, hold on, we have a lead round kick. We put the shin into the lead thigh which tends to break in this way, opens them up, you follow with an elbow, follow with the knee, follow with a punch, or round kick them in the ribs. Okay? So here's the lead one, then here's the rear. Lead, notice the hands cover in case the punches come in. Rear. Lead, push him off, rear. Okay? Alright? So, full round kick, this kick has tremendous crushing power because it does not snap from the knee. A lot of karate kicks, the knee comes up, the power is going this way, then it snaps from the knee. Good for focus, but it really cuts your power. Tie round kicks, we throw them from an angle so we can swing the leg from the hip and lower back. It's more like being hit with the Louisville Slugger baseball bat. So doubles, so train our retraction. We go five. Sometimes we work up to ten. Sometimes we'll go one, two. We switch our lead. One, two. Switch. One, two. Switch. One. Okay, so you get the point. <laughs> the idea is you hit him on one side, break him down, switch, throw it on the other side. Get you to switch lead and be strong on each side. So we have lead foot jab, we have rear foot jab, we have lead round kick, we have rear round kick. Now you notice that turning motion? This would simulate if I throw a round kick and he snaps back out of the way. Now again, spin to cover, Casey throws a quick counter. To block it, my hands are up in case he comes with a punch. We'll do this a little later too. Uh, those are the main kicks used in tie. Technically, you know. Technically, okay. When we round kick the legs, those are called cut kicks. It's like we're cutting the legs. To hurt him, make it hard for him to stand up, dissuade him from throwing kicks because of tremendous charlie horsing effect. Uh, they don't have as much power, but they're very damaging. You can also throw them to the calf. You can throw short versions across the midsection this way. The full round kick is when we really spin and torque. It goes to the ribs. All right. Full round kick can also be done here. It also goes to the head or the neck, right on the neck. Okay, one more time. You can go to the head. Okay, or if you've got the flexibility, you can come down and drop it on the brachial plexus in the neck, which if you've seen a James Bond movie, they chop and the guy gets knocked out. This is a neural plexus. This is a juncture where a bunch of nerves meet. It's a pressure point. Police teach it, this point, for uh, stunning people without having to kill them. You can stun people and knock them out with a shot. So often, if your man, maybe you foot jab him, 
set him up, his head comes a little bit forward, you come down, dropping the shin into the brachial plexus, okay? So I would foot jab him, set him up, then I would come down. Don't move, don't move, don't move, so I keep safety and foot jab, set him up, stay right there, touch, touch. Come down on the neck, come out. Good, okay? All right. There are a few other kicks. Right. If you were in this lead, we're left to left, hands up. I can chop him this way too. Cut, cut him this way. Okay. This can also go to the ribs. All right. If he's in opposite lead for me, I can cut to the inside this way. Right. Cut here. I can cut, flip, go to the elbow, go to the knee. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. The so there is a back kick, and there is a side kick. More often than not, the side kick in Muay Thai, man comes in, he steps, he just stands up, guard. The man steps in, steps in. We put the side kick out just to keep him off of it. It's not really a main technique in Muay Thai. It is used, some styles more than others. We use it merely to keep the man off. Okay, now, I go to, his hands are up, I go to throw a round kick, we'll do this in slow motion. He skips back out of the way. He comes back in on me, and I hit him with a back kick. All right. Most of the time in Muay Thai, same thing. Give me left. If we do the same thing again, he steps back. Usually the back kick is this way. It tends to be a spin. Some people will throw it more karate style, like a side back kick. Okay. So once again, the back kick. I go here. He comes this way. So the ribs. Or it's ahead. It's not used that much because it's not as powerful and it leaves you vulnerable because since in Muay Thai clinching is allowed, like street fighting, the guy a lot of times will grab your leg, he will attack your leg, okay? So we don't we don't use it that much because we are allowed to clinch. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is I'm gonna hold the tie pad for Rob for a minute. He has some good round kicks. Let him throw a few kicks. Also help him stay warm. <laughs> So we can do this, show you a little bit of putting this all together. Rob also I'll demonstrate as we use defense with the focus mitt before we punch sometimes we do the same thing with the tie pad we'll swing the tie pad at his leg to simulate a round kick coming in his leg and he can use a leg block to block the kick and return a kick on the pad all right so here's how we'll start okay stay right here all right left lead all right we'll start off slow I'm going to simulate that I'm throwing a round kick see what he's doing watch he blocks it with the shoe Shin conditioning is, is, is extreme in Muay Thai. The shins can get so hard that you can hit them with a stick full power and barely feel it. So he blocks here, okay? So I'm gonna simulate that with this. He blocks it, now he returns around to the counter of his own on this side. Okay, doing it without the pads, I would throw it, he would block it, he would kick my ribs, boom, okay? So he blocks, he kicks, good kick. He blocks, he kicks. He blocks, he kicks. He blocks, he kicks. Good. Now, when his kick hits, he can set it down forward if he wants. Now he's in range to elbow me, to clinch me, to knee me. See, we use this to get inside, okay? All right? Now, this time, <coughs> he will foot jab off the lead. We'll walk through it once. Gives me a foot jab off the lead. Okay? Then I quick... This simulates that I quick counter with the round kick, and he blocks it. Bang, then he throws his round. Okay? So he doesn't quite get away with his foot jab. He throws it and hits me. Boom. But I can come back. He blocks, and he counters. Okay? Down, speed it up a little bit. Good. Okay, now, combat speed. point right okay Rob let's do a couple of doubles what I'm gonna do I'll feed you the round I want you to block give me two on this side one 
set it down in front. You were, it simulates that you were going to come in. Then I step out of the way and I feed you one back. You block. You give me two on this side. Okay, switch the lead again. You block. Two and set down in front. One, two, set down in front. Block. Two. One, two. Okay, switch lead. Block. Two and set down in front. Block. Two. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, one more time. Block. Two. One. Two. Block. Two. 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 Good. Good. Get the idea. All right. Okay. What we'll do real quick now is we're going to demonstrate the power and how we get into range on the knee strikes a little bit. Okay. Uh, first, long range knee technique. He's feeding me a jab, and I'm going to parry his jab out of the way. Then he's going to hold it dead center as if I parry his jab and throw the knee into his bread basket. This is our long, one of our most long range knee techniques. Okay. All right. So, he feeds me a jab. I knock it out of the way. So I come in. Okay. This time, excuse me. You're a hammer. <laughs> he feeds me the jab. Cut it off, see the forward pressure I give here, then I feed the knee strike in here, this way, okay? Now he's going to feed me a jab and he's going to feed me a quick cross. I'm going to counter them both, I'm going to go to a two-hand clinch, and I'm going to show the knee striking with the clinching technique. This is very devastating. This can implode ribs, push them into the spleen, or, or lungs, and cause massive internal bleeding, you know, a lot of hemorrhaging. This, this can be fatal. This is stuff you would not play around with. This is very dangerous. So he'll feed me a jab cross, I'll show the counter, into the two-hand clinch, and I'll throw the knees. Mm -hmm. Cut him off, cut him off, drop to the clinch, I pull him into the knee, I'm going to push him away, two more, push him away, two more. Now we can throw him, into the hip. Okay? All right. Now, the side knee te side technique that we demonstrated a little bit earlier, can you left? Okay. This time, he throws a jab, I cut off the jab, I come in this way, blocking him, all right, see the angle, and I'm putting forward pressure, blocking his arm, then the side knee shot goes here, so the side knee shot goes here, okay, real slow again, jab and cross, jab, cross, cover, side knee, okay, one more time, bring out cross, Side knee. Okay. One more time. Down, cross. Side knee. One more time. Down, cross. Side knee. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I'm just giving you trouble. <laughs> he, he, he likes the injury. But it's okay. Happens. Part of the training. Um, now. Bend your arm. Bend your arm. Okay. Right here. Okay. Hold it there. Close quarter, hook knee technique, right here. This allows me to get a feel for putting it in hard. Okay. So it swings this way. That's the swing knee. Here again. What I'm doing is we're up close. We're holding each other. I swing and pull him into this shot. All right. If I have more room, I'll go with the side knee. If I have a lot of room frontally, I'll go with the straight knee. Okay. That simulation. All right. Yeah, right. You on? Okay. Okay. What we'll show is a couple. We'll show a little light, a light moving around with the hand. Put show some of the defense and offense combinations. All right. We're going to start off. He'll feed me a jab cross. Throw a return cross. We just move around a little bit. <clears throat> Throw a couple combinations back. This time he comes in with the jab cross again. I counter with the foot jab. Comes in jab cross. Round kick. Comes in jab cross and hook. Hook at my head. Now in my, my hand. Jab cross and hook my head. Bob and weave. I punch. I overhand punch. And I follow with the round kick. This, is, this shows you some of the transitions from the punching into the kick. How you use kick to counter punching, 
And now he's going to show how you can counter kicking with the punching. As I set up to throw a rear round kick, he will cut me off by stepping in and meeting my attack with the jab cross to my face. Okay? So when I step in to kick, he steps in and cuts me off before I can get the kick off. Jab cross, good. Okay, when I kick jab cross, I can hit me in his face. And I cover. There's my basic cover. Okay? Now, this time we just move around real light. <laughs> Show some of the basic details. You know, block, parry, only hands. We're just moving hands. Good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll combine a few kicks with some basic defense. We'll do this light enough and slow enough you can see what we're doing. And especially since you forgot his cup. <laughs> okay, so we'll start off, we'll direct a few combinations. I'm going to feed a lead foot jab, and he will, he will deflect it, and uh, he'll throw a, a rear round kick as a counter. Okay, so here we go. Foot jab comes in, he does a lead like parry, boom, to the, to the thigh. He can do it again a little higher, put it right on my kidney and fine. Dang. Good. Okay. Now, this time, he feeds me a lead foot jab. I roll and carry out. I cut here. I go to the clinch. And I feed the elbow. I go to the clinch. I feed a couple of knee strikes. Whoosh, I'll turn his going. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, this time, he feeds me a rear round kick. All right. I block here. Feed one back, okay? He feeds me one a little higher this time. I make a wall here and block. And I feed one right back in the wrist. He feeds me again. Boom. I return. He feeds me again. I return, okay? Now, this time, I see it coming even more so. We're further away. He steps and throws a higher round kick. So this time, I clinch it, step in here, and dump him. Then I kick to the head, okay? One more time, he throws a high one. I intercept, I dump him, I kick to the head, to there, come back in my mouth, okay? Now, this time, he throws a rear leg round kick. I just take the force and kick to the inside of his body. How about this? Good, good times, like this guy, Hollywood, man, he's Hollywood. See, okay. here, here, around again. That's the cut kick. This looks dangerous, but watch the, the mechanics and the physics. So, I'm very slow. When I come in here, even if it manages to hit me, it doesn't have much force. The, force. the power line is back here. So if I protect my ribs, I can take a very hard kick there as I return one here, which as you can see will break his down. It pulls the enemy, then he's there for the elbow, or the downward elbow on the spine, which I didn't show because that's a potentially fatal blow. <laughs> All right. So now this time, we're moving around, and he can, he can put that around kick as well. These are just some of the basic hand periods and blocks. You can deflect with the leg. Okay. You return. Now we just play a little bit with the kicks going light. Good jab, counter. Oh, 
Left shot would have been aiming for the kidney or for the spine, which is very dangerous. Now also, there's another technique. Let's say I throw a, a foot jab and a lead jab and he backs up, right? I throw this kick, he moves, I set it down. He moves to the corner. I can do a hit a running cut kick. Okay, so that would look like this. We're here moving. I can run and cut his leg. One more time. I come in, he starts to back up. Boom! I run and throw the cut kick. Okay, that's the running kick. Right. Another technique, not used as often, <laughs> but it can be devastating. It's a little bit fancy. We're out in this range. He, he, he feeds me uh, a lead jab, steps in with the jab. I knock the jab down. Jumping lead attack to the midsection. So the jab, this hand comes out to cut off this hand. I jump, jump me into this midsection. One more time. Okay. Now this time to show you that this can't work. Even though he knows I'm going to throw it. When he throws the jab, I want him to try to defend against it. Okay? So here we go. There's the jump me. Throw the jab. See, if he not back in ring. If he knocks it down, then he's still set up for the next shot. Then I can go to the spine with the elbow. Then I can push him, cut him, knock him out of the way. Okay? Alright, now what we'll do, we'll play around for a few more seconds. Punches and kicks, just lightly, back and forth. up with, uh, we'll show you a few of our conditioning techniques, and then that'll give you a good idea what this starts about. Here's some of the basic conditioning exercises, okay? First we go down and back, alright? You roll the boat for the abdominals. Like a block. Okay, now we go to the quarter sit up. Now I'm going to do this for a couple three minute rounds. Now we go across the ab cramp. Then we raise the feet. Add a little more tension on the lower abdominals. Then we torque side to side. Then we bicycle. Get it? You get the idea? Alright. Now for leg power and flexibility, we lunge out. We bottle and leave, hot here. We're going to leg power here. Switch, lunge out, drop. Okay. Then we do quick squats. Some of these drills come from from uh, Kiki Tersh and Kali. I happen to feel it. It builds good explosiveness in the inflexibility of the legs. We just move around, drop the squat, and come up. These are a little bit modified from the original. Okay. Then we do a squat, down and back, foot forward, forward, back, and up. Down, back, forward. Forward, and up, down, back, forward, forward, down, and up, down, back, forward, forward, and up, down, back, forward, forward, and up. The jumping, this plyometrics training first goes in. You jump, down, back, forward, forward, and up, and up. Okay, there we go. 
We're in a push-up. Then we do a half push-up position. Hop. The bill is standing in arm strength. Okay. Uh, medicine ball. We do a lot with the medicine ball. An old tried and true boxing gym training device has new applications. We use traditional applications for tempering the body. The trainer straddles you. Alright. He will spread closer and just pound. He pounds the abs. A little harder. Right. We'll stay off the other rib. It's been recently rearranged. <laughs> the lower abs, but not the groin. Not that hard, so to speak. Bum bum. Alright. Okay, stop. Good. Basic abdominal conditioning to be able to take loads of the gut. Now, we get into a new type of athletic training it's called plyometrics, which builds strength and power. It increases the range of motion in the joints, and it allows you to work on speed with resistance in a way the conventional weight training and weight training machines do not. One is just a basic chest put, like a shot put. You let it hit your chest for conditioning to catch. You breathe out on impact. This train should breathe out on impact when you get punched. Pitch. Just hang on. Okay? Now we do an overhead throw. This works the upper body. It's slightly different. He simply catches and returns in this position. A little bit slippery. Okay. Now we sit to further isolate across the legs. Here again we chest put. You let it hit and blow the air off. 